Okay, so we're gonna do this reading on no or minimum contact. And we're gonna take a look at your person's thoughts, feelings, and actions. Um, and I got some new cards here that we're gonna use for kind of more overall energies. These are called the fortune oracles. And then I'm also gonna use some um, of the magic of the unicorn oracles for advice. So we have three piles to choose from and I'm gonna pick some charms to put on each pile because why not? I don't know, I feel called. So the first pile here is the last rose tarot. So that's pile one. Pile two is the um, lunar eclipse tarot. And then pile three is the muse tarot. Okay, so pile one. What for pile one here? Oh, I had something I really wanted to grab. Where'd it go? I felt it in my hand. It felt like round. I lost it. So I guess we'll get this. What is this? Oh, <laughs> y'all have the green heart. Um, and there's a little diamond here on this heart. Hold this up so y'all can see that. So that's Paul one. Paul two. I did it again. I keep grabbing stuff and then they get through my hand. Ooh, okay. That's interesting. Very interesting. Pile two. You have the um, the dice that's on the four there. And pile three. <laughs> of all things. So this is a rock that I found where I live when I was walking one day and to me it looked like a broken heart. And at the time I was going through kind of a healing thing. So, um, that will be pile three, I guess. <laughs> there you go. So, pile one with the hearts, green heart chain. Pile two with the number four dice. And then pile three with the um, heart, broken heart rock. Okay. <laughs> so, pile one, pile two, pile three. Tom stamps will be down below, and I'll see you at your pile. Hey, pile one. So, if you chose the... Last Rose Tarot, and this is um, this charm here has a little chain on it. It's the heart, which is green, which is also the color of the heart chakra. Um, and then you have this little diamond here. Now, this diamond used to be really bright, but it's kind of been kind of rubbed, I guess, or something, and it's just not shiny like it used to be. So, intuitively, what I'm picking up on here is this may be someone for you guys that has still has your heart, but you just haven't, it's been tarnished. The way that you kind of see them in some kind of way has been kind of tarnished. There's been some, they used to look, look like a diamond to you. And now there's something about this person there. Either you're losing hope with this person, if this has been a long, no contact, or there's something about this person that just isn't as bright. You don't see them in the same kind of way as you used to. Definitely, you still feel very attached to this person. They're definitely someone that's still in your heart. Um, there may be some sort of imbalance with that, though. Okay. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this kind of like I do the you and them's reading, except we're only going to focus on your person. Um, so, I'm going to start with... I guess how I'm going to kind of do this is I'm going to do thoughts and then feelings and then actions, but we may do three different spreads because I want to use, um, make sure I have all the tarot out for it for some reason. I don't know why that is guys. I'm just coming up with that. If y'all can't tell, um, but I feel that. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> so we're going to pull overall energy for you. That way, you know, for sure, if this is your reading or not, we're going to pull overall energy for your person where they are with this connection. Um, and then we'll start in on tarot on their thoughts. Okay. So Paul one spirit, we want to know what Paul one, what's Paul one's energy towards their person here in this connection. We have the dragonfly number eight, have confidence during this time of great joy, renewal and connection to spirit. So the number eight is strength. And in tarot, which is Leo energy, but it's also about, I think that you may be in a position to where you feel like you've only kind of 
seen what's on the surface of this person and there may be something there that's kind of made you look at this in a way of you feel like there's a lot more to it or to the situation to this person that you may be not seeing. Um, again, all this green energy, you know, it's, <laughs> it's really relevant here and it just makes me feel like growth. It makes me feel healing. So you may be someone that's kind of in your, in the middle of trying to go through this healing, possibly about this person or this person's kind of caused that in you. And you're trying to kind of ground yourself in that. Um, kind of, there's a patient energy that comes with you, like you feel like you've been so patient with this person in some kind of way, but, and you're trying to be strong here, but there's some healing that you know that you still have to do or need to do. Um, and you're trying to be in this place to where you're just trying to be happy with where you are. You're just trying to keep moving forward. You're trying to kind of keep progressing and just be happy with where you are. So tell me about Paul One's person. What's Paul One's person's energy towards Paul One in this connection spirit? The sun, more Leo energy. That's interesting. Hmm. I wonder why that that kind of keeps coming out, this Leo energy. So it's fire, okay, fire energy. So maybe you may, be, may both be fire signs. Um, Leo is between the end of July and August, so that might be relevant for some of you. Maybe something kind of came up around that time or will or you're expecting that. Um, what else can I pull from that? Um, what else is it? You know, Leos are, I mean, it's just like strength with what I kind of already mentioned. Um, children may be involved in some kind of way. I can say that. Um, anything else? Okay, let's just keep going. I feel like there's something I'm missing from that, but I, I'm hoping it will come out here. Um, well, we can't unsee this. You have the lovers at the bottom of the deck, like a connecting energy here. I'm going to take it. Okay. So this sun energy for your person here, open your heart to the enormous growth ahead. So this person's kind of in a position to where they're trying to, maybe they're gaining some sort of success in their life or they're trying to stay focused on that with that sun energy. They're trying to stay open and clear to what it is that they do kind of know. Um, and this heavy energy of growth is like overall for both of you, just so you know, this, both of you in this connection, there's a tremendous amount of like growing kind of feeling that I'm feeling. This person is someone that may be trying to stay just really positive for wherever they are. Um, they are someone that has their heart open to this connection here. And it's almost like they feel like this connection in some way has grown them, you know, help them to evolve. And I think that this person may actually be trying to create something here um, or just being just focused on their growth. This lover's here in the middle, obviously. There's no need to go too far into that. But it's strange that the lover's here is the number 18. That's the moon in tarot. So also Empress energy here with the sun. Um, Number three is Divine Feminine Energy. And guys, y'all may resonate with one way or the other. So um, so this moon energy to be the lovers is kind of wanting me to say the way that this connection has, has kind of brought out these kind of possibly insecurities or um, this realization of how deceit can kind of affect a relationship is something that's really here that has brought that out within the two of you to make you kind of want to heal, I feel like, heal that part um, about how you see deception and what deception about yourself does to yourself. So deceiving yourself as far as um, maybe even not feeling good enough about yourself. There's just been a lot of things that this connection has kind of brought up that has made the two of you want to address that healing. There are two paths ahead, be true to yourself, is, is the message that's here on the lovers. And it kind of goes into what I was saying there about 
the two of you are trying to stay in a position to where you're just being more true to yourself here and focused on that moving forward. There's definitely a, a heavy energy of that children energy could also be that just that inner child that the two of you feel with that fire there. Um, and that's why you feel so still connected to this person. There's an inner child kind of, <laughs> it's a fun kind of energy that's there it, that you may not feel with anyone else or have ever felt with anyone else. There's a, just like this, where it's like the two of you's, I don't know, six-year-old selves kind of got together and like that's the way that you feel when you're around this person. Um, and that's something that the two of you have definitely not let go of this connection. So that tells me that for sure, maybe neither one of you have ever felt this way about a connection. Um, I do feel like this person here is kind of looking in your direction or kind of waiting for some sort of growth to take place or wanting that. Remaining positive about it. There's something to do with this person wanting some kind of clarity to take place. I think that there's an energy of the two of you both waiting. Okay. All right, guys. So if that sounds like y'all's storyline there in some way, shape, or form, then this is your reading. So let's see what this person's thoughts are first, okay? So what do they think about when they think about you in this connection? What is it that runs through their thoughts? Spirit. What is it that runs through Paul 1's person's thoughts when they think about Paul 1? When they think about this connection, what is it that runs through their their thoughts? What is it goes through their thoughts when they think about Paul 1 in this connection? What is it that Paul 1's person? So we have the three of cups in reverse. We have the King of Wands. We have the Two of Pentacles in reverse. And we have the Queen of, wow, Queen of Wands in reverse. Wow. Counterpart energy here plus the lovers. There's that, there's that close connection I was talking about there, guys. And there's that fire. <laughs> at all this fire. If the two of you aren't fire signs or in this energy with one another, at least, I would be really shocked. Um, clarify three of, three of cups in reverse, please. Why is it three of cups in reverse? You have the king of, of flutes, the king of cups here. Why is the king of wands upright? Why is the king of wands here? Oh, this is the, oh, this is, wait, what is this? This is the hermit. Why is the um, two of pentacles here in reverse? You have the three of wands. Wow, there's that motion, that movement. Okay, why is the um, queen of roses in the reverse? Well, that came out all by itself. There's that empress. <laughs> Awesome line up here, guys. I'm going to go through this. It's pretty crazy. Number 14, which is, this is temperance here. And underneath that, you have that six of swords and, and yeah, and the eight of flutes in reverse. This is someone that wants to mend a connection. This is someone that wants to mend a connection. If y'all aren't there yet, I think that, that this is a direction that you're headed. But I don't want to jump the gun because we haven't gotten to their actions. Let me go through this. I am going to run off some numbers that are pretty cool. So, so we have, you know, if y'all don't know me, this about me, I love numbers. I, I don't know if it's because I used to um, be a bookkeeper or what. Um, I don't know, but I just love numbers. And I did numbers all the time. But we have, they're so significant here, guys. We have three, three, and three. Okay, so there's 333, three, three, which is a number of reconnection. Okay, it's a number of 
not neglecting any part of yourself, which is the energy that you are in in, healing, in a healing position anyways. You, everything's kind of being grounded, I feel like. See how like this green, and then you have that love in the middle. It's, it's being grounded, that part of it, of what understanding of the connection itself. So that's three through three. And then you have two here. Um, and then you have all these counterparts out. You have this nine, okay? And this nine is here because I feel like this person, which I feel like is this king of wands, um, but it could be either, you know, it could be you or this person, but I'm picking up that this is your person. Anyways, it doesn't matter male or female, you know. Um, you could be embodying this kind of king, more king energy. This is someone here that's staying in this hermit mode here and trying to figure out where exactly they want to grow things and ground things, not only with themselves, but they think about that with this connection. So this is what they're thinking, okay? This is about, you know, the, the three of cups in reverse. I think that this person's thinking about honestly wanting to interact, wanting to come together and wanting to kind of isolate you or get out of kind of a friend area here. This is what I'm picking up on because you have the King of Cups to clarify that. So this person, this is person that has, is realizing their emotions here for you and they're stable in that. And they think about that. They think about how your, their emotions have been kind of balanced throughout no matter the distance or whatever's transpired here, right? They think about that and they think about how they want to kind of get out of that friend area that they are in in more of a isolated kind of relationship. And it's funny because she's looking directly at that three of cups in reverse and it's called the executive producer here for the king of, of wands. So this is somebody that's trying to figure out, oh, I'm so sorry guys, I forgot turn my phone on silent, but that reminds me, this is someone that's trying to figure out how to make something happen here, and they're in this hermit mode thinking about this, and it's interesting because she has that rose in her hand, like she's ready to kind of hand the rose over. This is someone trying to figure out a plan and how they're going to give you something here. How can they um, bring this to you? How can they get you to kind of see or understand their feelings that are here. Um, and then you have this two of pentacles in reverse with the three of wands. So this is someone that's, there's something about the distance between the two of you here. Um, where th things, they can't figure out how to balance that, whatever that is. They, there's something that's non-negotiable, that's not flexible, that's something here that they can't figure out how to get their way around whatever that is. Um, so that they can close the gap in the relationship itself. And it could do, be, has have something to do with distance. It could have something to do with, you know, so some kind of outside influence of some sort. So they're sitting and waiting until that kind of comes to flourishing or comes to balance so that they can kind of figure this out. Right now, they're just working on this emotional part. So how do they feel, how, what do they think about when they think about you? This person misses you. This person misses you. And they think about, <laughs> there's a level of jealousy that goes into this as well about you choosing someone else over them. So that's why they're in this planning stage that's here. I mean, guys, when we're talking about how this person is thinking about you and you see the king of wands with the king of cups, it doesn't get much better than that, okay? To me, as a reader, that's passion and love. That's what they see about you. That's the way that they're looking at this. Um, and they're seeing you as this, as this right here. This person, I think the both of you have this attraction towards one another that's kind of this undeniable kind of attraction towards one another. There's all this fire here in the beginning with this Leo kind of energy here. And then you have the Gemini in the middle with the um, lovers. I mean, that's, and you came out as, as a counterpart in the King and Queen of Wands. That's fire. That's passion. That's a connection that's kind of undeniable. This is how they see you. You have this Empress here with this Queen of Wands. And 
you you already have their heart is is the thing and they know that and whatever distance has been here has been an influence or influence towards that for some of you there may be someone else around and you may already be aware of this and they're kind of nervous about how that person is going to react to this to some extent i don't know who this is um but there's something about let's the way that i see the queen of wands when she gets mad all that fire goes in the opposite direction. And instead of using it as a got a good way, it can be turned around into a big ball of fire coming at you, right? That's the way I see the Queen of Wands in reverse. And that's where that kind of reminded me of that with this bachelorette here, the Empress in reverse. So this could be somebody that they, they're they trying to figure out how to move away from in some sense. How, whatever that means to, to you guys is something that's there, by the way, okay? And then this bottom of the deck here with the temperance. This is what they're doing overall in their thoughts. They're trying to think about this and trying to figure out how to kind of put all this stuff together and, and move to a calmer place here. And this person could actually be even moving because the three of swords is here as well. You have this, um, this eight of cups here, which it shows the package of them packing up, you know. And, and then you have this here, which is the six of, Six of Swords, which is moving to a calmer place. Again, a card of moving. And then you have this um, Temperance where they're trying to balance all that out. And the Temperance is actually representing, you know, keep it chill. Like, <laughs> um, that's funny. The temp Temperance is actually representing the, um, the way that they just kind of want to bring their kind of reality in their what they dream about kind of in together. They want to unite those two. And that's what they, this is their whole like above thought process. And when it goes into when they think about you. I'm going to go through some signs. Um, and they are, just so you know, they're hurting about this connection. If you've been wondering that. They are hurting about this connection. They're hurting about trying to find balance in this connection and like I said how to bring those two things kind of intertwine them and bring them together causes this person misses you I think that if they could this person would be somebody that would would want to be around you a lot because you have this this empress here is that loving nurturing you know all that kind of just, it's just, a, it's the empress. It's all the queens. You, you would love to be around all the queens. You know what I mean? Like they, that would have everything. This person sees you as someone that has everything that they kind of want and kind of need. There is a little bit of self-worth that goes into this though, but I think that's what your person's in the middle of kind of healing that's being brought up from this connection in some way. So I don't know if they've, seen you if you have no contact i don't know if they're like if they've seen you kind of post something or something like that that makes them think about it but they're definitely in their head when it comes to jealousy a little bit of jealousy is going on it's almost like they just they're afraid maybe somebody else is going to come in and kind of take you before they get an opportunity to balance things out for themselves there's the two of cups so let's see how this in the three of Three of Cups was on the other side. So, that, I mean, I'm telling you, this person's trying to figure out how to get out of that um, friendship kind of stage or space that they've placed themselves in in some way. So, let's see about what's in their heart space, okay? Can you tell me what's in Pile One's person's heart space? Um, you have the moon, the ace of cups in reverse, the four of cups. Yeah. This person could have rejected you in the past, they're, but they're definitely, yeah. Let me just keep getting them out. No, I'll, I'll go into it. Can I have one more, please? How this person's feeling? What's in there? What is in their heart here for Paul one? No. Oh. Power in reverse. Okay. Clarify the Four of Cups, please. Look at the way she's looking out her window and looking at this. These, This couple and this couple. Guys, look at these cards. I just put this together. That is so crazy looking. 
Look at the two of you. <laughs> Look at this. You have the feminine energy here, the masculine energy here. They're both kind of in this position of feeling distraught. And then you have these memories in the middle. And neither one of them are being seen upright. And it has to do with love and it, the Ace of Cups, and it has to do in a relationship, and it has to do with the moon, which is the same thing we talked about here with the lovers in the 18, this being the moon energy. The two of you think about these things, and one of you, in a way, is thinking about what what it is that you, you lost in that connection, or if this person kind of has rejected you in some kind of way. And the other person here, this masculine energy, is looking at this a very very distraught. This is the tower, Scorpio energy, that transformational kind of energy being in reverse. Again, they're thinking about, thinking about if this, if this, if they can't keep this together. That moon's getting to them, I feel like a little bit that, um, I think this person worries about what they can offer you. A lot. And then, then you're here just looking at this Ace of Cups, this love. <laughs> the, this person in their heart space, they're worried about losing you in some kind of way. And they haven't figured out how to keep you either. And it, it's in their heart because that's what hurts. Um, Tell me about the Four of Cups here. What is the Four of Cups here for? Ugh. You have the King of Pentacles in reverse. It's just what I talked about. I think this person is, is worried about... Tell me about the Ace of Cups in reverse. You have the Devil. This person, if they've rejected you, they think about that in their heart. That hurts. Um, thinking about that. This person feels this trapped kind of energy about whatever transpired here in the past and how they've kind of, however they've kind of reacted there where they weren't feeling, I think this person didn't feel good enough to be honest. But where they weren't feeling, they're reflecting on how they weren't. So they're reflecting on the person they wish that they, I wish I would have said this. I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have this and this and this. And it's in their heart because it hurts to think about it. I think this person feels a little remorseful about how they kind of did things in the past. However that was. Um, they may have saw this connection here as something that was toxic here with the devil and the ace of cups in reverse. And... I think, that, again, that's more of that moon energy of how things kind of got to this person here. That's the devil's feeling trapped by the devil when it comes to our relationships. And something that lays on their heart is they <clears throat> accepting that this may not come together is something else that hurts. And, they, and this person's kind of, there's a lot of passion here, guys. It keeps coming up. I'm trying to like... Shoo it out of my mind, but it just comes right back. <clears throat> you see these two people here kissing each other. Why is the moon here? Let me just get, get the... God, I can't talk. Let me get the clarifiers out, and then we'll keep going. <laughs> okay, there's the emperor. Yep, he's stuck in that moon energy in reverse because he doesn't feel like he's in the... He's just... There's no... He feels like he's not stable. Um, you have 16. You have 15, 16, 18. You don't have a star because this person doesn't know how to bring things to get back together. Why is the tower here in reverse? Nope, I don't want that one. Why is the tower here in reverse? Okay, that makes sense. Look at what you got. You have the seven of swords and the three of pentacles. I mean, the three of wands, which is what we saw earlier in their thoughts. That's the tower.
This person is trying to hold together <laughs> the foundation until they figure something out, okay? They're trying to, if, if this person's, if there's distance here, this person's trying to stay wherever they are, stay in the, they're trying to, in their heart, okay? They're trying to stay in the place that they are and trying their best to kind of remain stable there. And they're doing that because they're waiting for an opportunity, okay, to try to show you their, show you, to try to show you what it is. This person's not going to come to you without some sort of plan here. This seven of, of, but there's some, guys, this person gets in their anxieties a lot, a whole, whole, whole lot. And it really brings up a lot of stuff for this person to deal with. And they need this time here, this kind of distance here as well because of that, okay? Um, but they're trying, this is not somebody coming to you without a plan. And you have, there's the 17, <laughs> it's in reverse, how awesome. How awesome. And then you have that three cups in reverse as well. The ten of pentacles in, re in reverse. This is someone that feels a lack. Yeah. Yeah. This is someone that feels a lack. They're kind of in a position to where they're at a standstill. Uh, they don't feel like they can. This is someone that with this nine of pentacles in reverse is someone that's doesn't feel like they have what it what they need in order to be able to kind of ground something, move forward with grounding something here. And they're in a position to where they kind of worry about what it is they do have or what they could actually lose here with that Ten of Pentacles in reverse. That Eight of Cups in reverse is about this person again, kind of not wanting to walk away from this, you know, um, but knowing that this is kind of bringing up some stuff they still need to heal from. And in their heart here, you have that star in reverse because they don't know. Um, in their heart, they don't feel like that they're capable of bringing an emotional balanced connection here. And they're in this waiting period. But it, it brings up a lot of anxieties as well because meanwhile, while they don't feel like they're in a position to bring you anything or be good enough or that they can make something work or they feel stable enough to do so. Meanwhile, they know that they're kind of running out of time here with you or more distance and more distance is in between this. And, and where could that lead? And that brings them back to more anxieties. It's a kind of a loop that they're kind of in where they don't feel like they can necessarily get out of and they're they feel like they're being strategic, but they're also waiting for some kind of, maybe waiting for some kind of opportunity to, to unfold for them, to show them. It's like, somebody give me something or show me the light of how I can fix this. I know it's coming in divine timing. If I can just sit here and wait, if I can just sit on this and hold this together, you know, that kind of energy is what I'm feeling. Okay, so let's get into their actions, okay? It's funny, but all the all these have been kind of with their actions as well. So we'll just see what kind of comes out. I do have to say though, all of this is in their heart, guys, because it hurts. This hurts them not being able to have what they feel like they would want in this moment in time here with you. Um, it not being able to see that wish coming true is it's painful. That hurts. Um, that's why it's in their heart. That's where that's, that's where it's coming from. You know, that's where the heart is kind of coming from is that's how they're recognizing it as something more than just a simple relationship. There's a deeper, there's a deeper sense to this relationship. Okay. It's almost like they can't cut the ties here with you. They can't. It, once you kind of experience that with someone, you know, you can't really unsee it. That kind of feeling is, is still there. No matter what's kind of going on here between the two of you. 
um, it's like this person's in a way kind of trying to have best of both worlds, like keep you, but not to like an extreme, but I mean, just like keep you somehow until they like, it's like someone saying, I can't fully invest in this, but I can invest a little bit and then, you know, kind of, but it's, it's in a way of this person kind of trying to hold it together. So what is Paul one's person's actions, spirit? What is Paul one's person's actions? Look at that. Death, it's um, Scorpio energy, and it says the end here at the bottom. Um, yeah. What is, okay, what is Paul one's person's actions? What are their actions? So there's that King of, King of Wands again. There's the Temperance again. And there's the Queen of Wands in reverse. What is this person's actions? What is this person's actions? Why is the death here? What is death here for? There's that Knot of Pentacles. Slowly but surely kind of transforming, having some sort of rebirth here. Why is the king of Pentacles, king of wands here? Why is the king of wands here? Um, this is, this is the full in reverse. And now you have the producer and the executive produ producer. <laughs> so why is the, why is the temperance here? You have the ten of swords. Why is the Queen of Wands here? So your King and Queen are out again. You have the Page of um, Swords. This is interesting as their actions go. There's the Empress in reverse, the bottom of the deck. Wait a second. This isn't the full. Why did I say that? This is the... Um, I was wondering that, that how that made sense because the producer wouldn't be the full energy. This isn't the full, guys. This is the magician in reverse. This person's trying to figure out how to do this. You have the, yeah, with no commitment here, guys, I'm telling you. Hmm. This person wants to be this front runner here, right? But they don't have this... This three of pentacles in reverse is they don't know how to kind of work together. They can't they can't put everything together, okay? They can't figure this out. But you do have the full here. Okay, so taking a leap here. Um, and I think they're taking a leap here towards you. I think they're taking a leap towards there's you know what they're doing is they're kind of taking a leap towards kind of depending on you to kind of bring things together. That's what they're doing. They're slowly but surely coming towards you, transforming. They have this action, okay, of, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to come in really slow and see how things kind of transform. And I don't feel like I have everything that I need in order to be able to come up with this plan that I want of how to kind of move this forward. So in order to find balance when it comes to maybe how I've treated this person in the past, I'm going to kind of take a step back and allow this person and me to come together slowly. Stay in this Knot of Wands energy here. Just in and out. We'll, we'll see what happens. Not be committed. And maybe if I take this leap, this other person, which is you, can kind of help me to formulate some sort of plan moving forward. This is here. Um, this is kind of a mystery to me because I do feel like there's some kind of insecurities though about how this person is going to address this with you. Okay. 
something to do with how this person feels like they can address this with you without, I mean, you have the page here. So it could be how they're going to address it to someone else as well. This is something they want to communicate though. Tell me more about this. Why is this queen of roses in reverse? Why is this queen of wands in reverse? Um, okay, so this, guys, <laughs> this is a special card in this deck. Um, it's called the bomb. It has a little bomb on it. It's like the tower, but instead of the tower coming down, it's someone that kind of is the producer of making that tower fall. In reverse, it's almost like they're not doing it for a bad reason. They're doing it for kind of a behind the scenes kind of thing, which goes into this whole person's actions. But I think that this person's trying to kind of, it's almost like they're using their insecurity to communicate something to you, to figure out something. This is like someone that's, this sounds weird, but this is like someone that would tell a story about someone else to try to see how you felt about a situation. They would tell us, like, they would tell a story about a relationship to see what you would comment on that. So they knew exactly how you would feel about them doing something like that. Okay. Take that how it resonates. That's what came out. There you go. <laughs> I know that sounds strange. Let me get one more actually. Um, I am seeing the, the six of wands in reverse. They're doing this because they don't know if they'll be successful here or not. And it's a way for them to be able to do it without doing it. Take a risk without taking a risk. Does that make sense? Tell me about the, the page of mirrors here. What is the page of mirrors here? Ace of, <laughs> the ace of swords in reverse. This is the plan that they're kind of trying to, to conjure up. This could even be someone that says something like, and now you have the high priestess here. Yep what they're doing guys and the sun energy again this is someone that says something like i've heard this and they'll go into detail about it just to see what your reaction would be to see if you're the, telling the truth or not so they don't look like they're just being you know jealous or being nosy or whatever but really they're no they didn't hear anything from anybody they just say that to see if they can figure things out without straight up asking you. Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. So if that made sense, let me get some message cards from this person and then we'll get some advice and close. Okay. So Paul one's person, what would they say to Paul one? If they could say anything, what would Paul one's person say to them? So we have interference and external party is intruding. And I said that earlier in the, I think the action portion of the reading, the very beginning, there's something external here. Yeah, I want to start over. There's something external here that's keeping the two of you from being able to start over. This person's trying to figure this out. I wondered how far this would go. It's a shadow card. So they're trying to figure that out. I think they're trying to see how far everything's kind of going to go. Because, um, you know, they're trying to hold that tower together. I wish I could take my words back. And that's what we talked about in their heart space. If they rejected you here, which is this energy I'm seeing here with this Ten of Swords. It actually says rejected. With the temperance, they're trying to figure out how to balance that back out. Now that they've already said something, now how can they go back and change that? So what else would this person say? I guess I'm going to take this one because it won't let me not. Chemistry, we know. <laughs> Number 28. Yeah, we know. They're, they're also formulating a plan, by the way. But um, it may have to do with that outside influence. 
Interesting. Yeah, they feel the chemistry here. We got it. What else would this person say to file one if they could say anything? Apology, yeah. They want to start over here and apologize for whatever they've said here in the past or someone that was possibly an interference to some extent. That's what they wish they could kind of take back here. What else would this person say to call one if they could say anything? Okay. Do I still have a chance in abundance? Yeah. This abundance has to do with this sun energy I've been feeling. Um, thank you for leaving me is on the bottom of the deck. This right here, guys, has to do with this abundance, I feel. Something to do with, you know, we talked about this person and their healing or things that they didn't see before until this connection and it kind of brought all that up. That's what this is about. Okay, so let's see what advice spirit has here. What advice do you have for Paul one moving forward? So we have, I am, pre I am presence. Number 44, expand your stellar gateway. I am that I am. This is about you. Um, well, one of the things that came to mind was you staying in the present moment. Um, and not getting too far ahead when it comes to this connection because this is right now is in this kind of present energy, not going too far from that. Um, and kind of fo being focused on who you are, being focused, this person being focused on who they are is the way that, you know, that Gemini en energy here is the way that the two of you can kind of get to where it is that you need to go in this relationship. You need to be able to focus on yourself focus on what it is that you need for yourself is that way to maintain this relationship. When you start kind of focusing on the other person too much, y'all start to drift apart from one another because you can get too far in the moon if you're not focused on your own feelings and how you feel about the other person. And instead, you're just solely focused on how this other person's feeling all the time. Then you're not in tune with your own feelings, you know, and this is where you need to make sure that you maintain this energy. It's for the both of you because that's the number 44. So stabilize that. What is um, Paul one's advice? Paul one's advice. Look at that, guys. I love synchronicities. I love them. I love them. I love them so much in readings. It's insane. You have the number 44 here, guys. Look at this. Divine presence, the force of love and creation. This is about you imagining outside of the box when it comes to this connection. Kind of letting yourself dream about this connection and how it could progress or move forward. And staying away from the moon, guys. Staying away from that moon. Um, your internal spirit. Higher self and sacred in intuition. Listen to your inner guidance and intuition. Don't try to be too caught, too far caught up in what this person's feeling, thinking. Don't be listening to readings all the time. I know that's bad for business, but <laughs> it's very bad for your mental health as well. So it should be your number one priority because you can start to get too far into that. Oh, this and that and kind of get nervous and scared. You could have one bad reading and hear something that makes you kind of that throws you off. So don't, don't do it too often. Always kind of come back to yourself. Always, always come back to like you would a friend, you know, like you would a family member. Always kind of calling them and making sure they're doing all right, even if they're distant from you know, or whatever. Don't ever get too far from home there. So be supportive. Healing. Absolutely. It's here. Intimacy. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Look at that. Doubt cancels abundance. You have this abundance here. Don't doubt yourself. This person doesn't need to be doubting their self. This connection, if you are connecting with this person in some way, could be something that's very supportive. Just feeling the energy itself, even if you're in distance from one another, could be supportive um, and healing at the same time. Okay, so as long as you're kind of focused on the sun, the growth of that, and not the devil energy there. So we have... <laughs> We have the number eight, which is, I laugh because you have 44, 44, you know, eight's progress. You also have three, which is that Empress energy once again. 
And together you have 11, so being on the right path, there is a big deal here as well. You also have zero, which is that full energy, taking a leap of faith. Three is about growth and expansion, um, and things moving forward here. We have JR, so JR Jr. might be significant. We have V, S, we have E. We have two of the crossroads here because I feel like but you know, both of you are kind of at a crossroads in your life in the same kind of direction, um, you know, making choices. But this could have to do with an X, guys, obviously, if you're kind of tuning into this reading. So we have Y. So we already have yes here. The answer is yes, if you had to question. We have Z, G, L, miss that one. U, L, L, V, I, Y, and O. Okay, guys, um, let's see here. Well, obviously, we have love. <laughs> That's always going to stand out to me, I feel like. We also have lover, which I'm not surprised. <laughs> That's definitely something, if you haven't seen this person in a while, they definitely still think about that. Um... We also have, um, we have joy, joy in the bowl. Joy's in the bowl. Stay joyful. Oh my gosh, I just had that song in my head, joyful, joyful. Um, we have Lily here. So it might be significant. What else? We have... We have grill. This person may, with this here, this page of swords, may try to grill you about some things. I have to say, it's a, there's a chance that if you are in contact with this person in some way, they could actually kind of grill you about your past or relationships to some extent or question you about something that maybe they've heard or something to that nature. Um, so, it's just a heads up there. We have Jolly in the bowl as well. And Lolly. Um, okay, I'm just going to leave you guys here. <laughs> Could do that forever. So, oh, we have Glue. Yeah, which is, this person wants to keep this connection in some way together or back together. It's like that glue, like we talked about in the beginning. Experiencing this connection, feeling it, and not being able to kind of get away from that. So, I'm going to leave you here. Hope you enjoyed this reading, guys. I hope this resonates. Hope it makes sense to y'all. And um, if you want a personal reading for me, my information for that's in the description box. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all your love and your support and your kindness. And I hope to see you soon. Hey, pal, too. So if you chose the Lunar Eclipse Tarot, and this dice here that's on a four. So I did see a two as well when I picked it up. I kind of picked it up like this. So. Two is the number of balance, stability is the number of four. Um, so that kind of ties in together, you know, in order to have stability, you have to first be in balance, right? So that might have something to do here with this connection, but the number two is also partnerships and, you know, relationships. And the four can also be about structuring something here as well. Um, Having some kind of security is something that could be coming up, you know, having some kind of security in this relationship here. Okay, so before we get tarot, we're going to go ahead and grab some of these new oracles that I have. These are called the uh, fortune oracles. And we're going to get an overall energy for you and your person. Start with your energy pile too. All two's energy here towards their person. Let's call two's energy here towards their person. Spirit, call two's energy towards their person. You have two. Um, plane, the number 26. A journey is indicated either physically or methodically. Your life will become more full. Okay. Interesting. This also came out. Number 23L. There are spiritual messages and great wisdom to be found during this period of transition. So these are two cards of trans transition. 
um, and learning as you're kind of transitioning here. Hmm, interesting. Okay, tell me more. How is Paul one, Paul two, I'm sorry, Paul one might be stuck there though. <laughs> How is Paul two's person feeling towards Paul two? Well, we can't take that many. I do want to take this top one though. I feel like it's relevant. The other ones that we see here are key number 15, new beginnings, interactions, and the star number 29, which is also the number 11. Um, well, that's significant. Hard times are over. Look forward to an abundance of happiness. Guys, new beginnings and the star. I am going to keep these out. <laughs> I wasn't going to, but dadgummit. I kind of have to now, right? You have love at the bottom of the deck with the phoenix and the lovers. Okay. What is going on in this relationship? Okay. So, let, let me go through some of this and then I'll put some of these back. Okay. Let's, let me just go through your person's energy here. There's a lot of feelings here, guys. Um, the lovers here, be generous, success, and emotional fulfillment are yours, along with the, having the new beginning as the key and the star energy that's here, looking forward to what the future holds. This person here feels as if whatever they're experiencing here with you, or whatever's come up, they feel like they're on the right track. Um, they feel like they are sitting in a place where they feel like they have a lot of hope here for the future of this connection. Um, they feel as if maybe there's been some kind of new beginning here. Or they feel like this should, that's something that's coming soon. This is someone that's letting whatever was in their past, any kind of negativity in this relationship... If they haven't yet, they're wanting to leave all that in the past. They feel like that whatever happened, it's it's over with or they want it to be over with. And they're looking forward to an abundant future here. Um, and I think that this person's feeling this or wanting to feel this kind of emotional fulfillment here with you. There's a lot of, with the flower energy, you know, it's that blossoming. They feel like this new kind of energy of things kind of blossoming or coming out, expanding in this connection. Um, in the connecting energies their self, you have Gemini and Scorpio and um, Gemini here for me, actually. Um, in Pisces with that moon kind of energy. <clears throat> when you have love, lovers, and Phoenix. This is a connection that's transforming. It could be going here transforming from if lovers was lust right this intimacy that's here and love is love here surround yourself with all loving connections move forward positively in all areas of your life and this is also the star energy so what i'm feeling here is that the two of you may be kind of in a place to where you're hoping and wishing for this connection itself is going from one thing transforming to something else. This says, be prepared to be renewed after a period of crisis. And this is the same kind of energy I felt here with letting go of the past. So I don't know if there's like a renewal here in this connection, but it's definitely something that's in the middle of transforming here with this Phoenix. Okay, so I'm going to put these to the... To back, to, I'm going to put these back. I'm going to leave these out. I'm going to leave your owl out here as well. So let's go over your own energy real quick, which is something I probably should have done first, but I felt like called to do the other ones. Um, this owl energy that's here. You may be trying to, I mean, there's. it says there's a lot of spiritual messages and great wisdom to be found during this period of transition. This is most definitely a period of transition. And I think that you're trying to be really wise here with this out energy about how you kind of progress forward. You may be doing a lot of things more to yourself, keeping to yourself, not really explode, ex not really opening 
up yourself fully to this person in some kind of way, but you're trying to be smart about things kind of moving forward and how they kind of progress and move forward and throughout this change period that's kind of taking place. As far as plane goes, you may be kind of in a position to where you are working on that stability for yourself. The 26 can reduce down to the four, which you have the four here for your overall energy. Um, I mean, for your charm there. A journey is indicated either physical or metathodical, your life will become more full. There's an idea, and this is kind of like star energy, but being it's a plane, it's like you're the one that's kind of having to take some sort of action to make this kind of happen here. It's unlike the stars just being kind of written in the stars. I think that you have this awareness that you have to kind of move in some direction to kind of help things kind of unfold or come together in some kind of way. Um, you could be just starting to pick up on or feel like your life feels a lot better with this person around um, or this person kind of in your life to some extent or when they were in your life. You kind of felt like a lot more stable. There's some kind of a balance that went into that and maybe that's why we saw the two and the four there. Um, But trying to be logical is something that's kind of, kind of overshadows this star kind of energy that I feel. Um, you may also be someone that's kind of really reflecting on the past and not wanting to make different choices kind of moving forward. But there's love here in this connection, guys. The, the two of you, I think, are both kind of, this is the star again, Aquarius energy. I think the two of you also have justice here with 11. Um, are both trying to, you may be in a position to where you're trying to be more strong or come across as being more strong or more stable than you actually maybe are. Um, but both of you are seeing things and maybe possibly seeing some sort of future here um, or seeing a possible significance of success in some kind of way here. Um, <clears throat> you both kind of are wanting to move forward in a positive place and kind of in a position to where this person here is just wanting to leave everything in the past and move forward and feeling good about that. And you are more in a place to where you're trying to be logical about where you are and why you're there and not to repeat something of the past and kind of being smarter this kind of time around or whatever this is, okay? Um but there's definitely love here that the two of you are feeling or at least feel like that's something that's possible in this connection in the near future because that is the star. The two of you may look at each other as being kind of a wish come true in a way. Um, and not wanting to kind of, maybe you both wanted a second chance at this and you're getting it so you don't want to kind of mess that up. So take all that how it resonates. Let's get... Um, so we're going to get some tarot. I just saw the Ace of Wands. So there's that new beginning again. We're going to get some tarot. How I'm going to do this is we're going to take a look at your person's thoughts, feelings, and actions. But I'm going to get three different spreads out. And then we'll get some message cards. And then we'll get some advice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> These cards are very slippery. Okay. Y'all don't make fun of me. Um brand new deck and they are very very slippery especially on my desk okay so good enough now they're definitely shuffled <laughs> so what is pile two's person um thoughts what is in their head space pile two's person pile two's person what are they thinking about when they think about pile two in this connection what do they think about there's the two of pentacles in the world <laughs> Well, this has to do with travel with the plane being here as well. This could be something to do with travel, wanting to travel, needing to travel to get kind of close to one another, there being some kind of distance there. Again, a card of reflection. This person kind of, they may reflect on the distance that's between the two of you. And this could be emotional. This could be physical. This could be just um, in your lives in general, some kind of way, like maybe differences here. Um, with that two of pentacles and how to kind of balance that out, those differences. This is what this person's thinking about. How to kind of, they also think about how the two of you kind of reflect one another in some kind of way. 
because you have the reflection here and her reflection here. They may see a lot of themselves in you to some extent. What else? I have death here, Scorpio energy. This is that transformation that's coming in. And again, you have these two malls here. You both could have just completed some sort of a shadow work or understanding about yourselves that you didn't quite see before with that third eye in the middle of that skull. But the rebirth is definitely something else that I'm seeing here because you have this ending here and then a rebirth. So this is something that you're reconnecting here with someone and balancing that out is what this person's kind of thinking about. And there's that five of wands. I've started, already saw that once. So with that five of wands, this is, you know, outside influences could be a factor here and this person can be kind of conflicted about that. Maybe one in particular that they're kind of worried about for some of you, but for others of you, um, that could be, it could be a person or a place or thing. It doesn't matter. It's just some, that's, there's something that this person's kind of battling with and trying to find balance with understanding how that kind of would work or go together. Why is the two of pentacles here? Yeah, the emperor in reverse. There's definitely, let me get some more out before I tell you about that. Why is the world here? I have the queen of wands in reverse. Why is the, um, why is death here? We have the ace of swords in reverse. That's interesting. Why is the five of wands here? Two cards. You have the tower and the nine of cups. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. So this person thinks about how whatever the tower moment was that took place here, is kind of their wish fulfillment, was their wish fulfillment. So if this is this new beginning, but there's still conflict that's here, they kind of almost have this kind of wish that things would just get shake, shook up so that they can kind of not be so conflicted here on thinking about things. This is really pulling me in here with the death and the, the ace of swords in reverse. You have that high priestess in reverse. So with the three of wands and the six of pentacles in reverse. This person, I, kind of, I don't think that they quite understand or know for sure kind of where you sit. They're in a position to where they're waiting, you know, for secrets or something to be exposed, something to come to the surface. This is what they think about a lot. Um, and it could be from them, you know, even thinking about kind of exposing or saying something. I think that that has something to do with the give and take in this connection and um, wanting to come out of the cold with certain kinds of things. Like they think about a lot how much they're giving or maybe not, it's not any equal. They think about that and they think about wanting to kind of, ex kind of waiting to see how it goes before they kind of talk or speak or say anything about that, something that they think about. So you have the two of pentacles that's here with the emperor in reverse. They're still juggling kind of, this could be someone else here, but this is, you have Leo, um, Aries, Scorpio, Scorpio, um, Pisces energy here. This could be somebody else, but I feel like this person's just kind of sitting in this place to where they're juggling kind of different areas. And they feel like they have to be like in this kind of, they have to control. Maybe they have to control their thoughts. They have to control where they kind of, how far they can kind of take this connection or where this connection kind of, it's like they can run away for it with their thoughts if they allow themselves to do that. And they're trying to like rein that back, pull that back in. Because there's a part of this person where they don't feel like they have the control in making some kind of decision here when it comes to this connection or what that would, I guess, kind of look like. So one of the things that they think about here is that I think this person feels a little bit insecure about the differences that are shared in this connection with the world being here, whether that's differences in location or physically, some kind of differences that's here that this person sees as being, they're a little bit insecure about whatever that is. Um, they also are worried about other people kind of being an influence or being jealous towards this connection. Um, and there could be something to do with travel here that this person feels 
neglect, neglected about, what does that mean? Um, with the, you could have planned a trip or something to travel with this person here with this plane and maybe some kind of message came through of to telling you, telling you not to do that, whether it was like a spiritual message or just some kind of message telling you not to do that. That was something that this person thinks about. They think about that. It, it causes some kind of insecurity within them about that. So this is interesting. This death here with the Ace of Swords in reverse. It's like this new beginning took place, but there's it was a new beginning based off a rebirth based off of things that are unknown still to this person. So even though there's like this new beginning that's here or a possibility for that is here, there's still an unknown about how it kind of what it is in kind of logical sense. And um yeah, you know, a lot in them, in their mind, they can't figure out what kind of rebirth this is or will be, what it will look like, what does it mean. There's still, um, even if you're reconnected with this person, there's still a level of of not knowing, not understanding, um, and a lack of clarity about. I think that both of your point of views. You know, we know this high priestess is here because this person's waiting to kind of expose something. So they're definitely keeping things to themselves. I think that you may be in that same energy with this owl, with that wise energy you're kind of sitting in, you know, being smart here. You have the, the nine of cups with the tower. This person's conflicted about how they can have this, uh, this fulfillment here with you. Um, this dream come true, this wish come true. Um, I think that this person may be worried about an outside influence messing this up, coming in and destroying this. But I think this person's also, this is kind of weird, but it's almost like, I don't know why with this I'm feeling a level of guilt. There's a guiltiness, there's a guilty feeling behind this for some reason. And it has to do with some kind of outside influence that's there. So take that how it resonates with your situation. Um, but they are, they think about how there's a level of this person that thinks about this connection and how this is kind of like a wish come true kind of thing. But it can also cause a lot of destruction as well. And there's there's almost kind of an anger behind that when it comes to spirit in the sense or reasoning of this connection. Why give me something that I can't, that's kind of caused destruction? You see what I mean? And conflicted about that. How does this, how does it fit or how does it make it right? It feels right. There's, that's undeniable. But, it's almost like they look at this and say, this is my wish or my, this is like my dream come true here. But it also causes this tower, this destructive kind of energy here. These are these, this is just constantly what this person kind of thinks about. Repetitive, like, like this just goes into it and then they go back and then they just kind of work their way kind of through it. There is no kind of, I'm anxious to see what's in their heart because there's not really any kind of structure here. Now, if you look, you notice there's a lot of different kinds of energies, but there is not really any swords, any logic to this. The only one here is the Ace of Swords, and it's in reverse. This person's not like in this logic sense. They're in kind of in a more of a daydreamy or moonlight kind of space, and that maybe is just where this person feels comfortable, but. They're, they're not, there's not a structure that's here. There's just kind of dreaming. Okay, that's interesting. So let's see what, um, I always say that, don't I? That's interesting, interesting. <laughs> Y'all know why I say that? It has nothing to do with my readings, to be honest. 
My son, my six-year-old, he will talk your head off. I mean, just nonstop. Just talking, 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 talking. Cutest thing ever, but sometimes you have to just, oh, good grief, I did it again. <laughs> I did it again. Okay, four ones, we see you. <laughs> Y'all see that? Um, the four ones is that, that union energy that's there. How funny. Needed to show itself. I don't know why it did it that way, but there you go. Four wands. We got gotcha. you. Um, anyway, so sometimes you just have to sit there and say, that's interesting. Wow, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so anyway, let's get back to it. I digress. Paul 2, what is this person's heart space? What do they feel? Well, that's just flipped right out. Wow, the King of Pentacles and the Eight of Swords. <sighs> something about this person and the way they see you think about you that is hard on this person. Hard in a way of, it's hard in a way of it being like, um, <laughs> it's like a guilty pleasure almost. That's what I'm feeling. That it's like I, they have a really hard time understanding why they feel the way that they feel. They, in their heart, is where the swords are. What else? What's in this heart? First, pal twos. Thank you. Strength. So, feelings are strong. What is in this person's heart space for pal two? What's in your heart for Paul too? Seven of Wands in reverse. This person's fighting it, guys. This person's fighting this. I feel like they're trying to fight how they feel for you. Um, they definitely are trying to fight how they feel here. Tell me about the King of Pentacles, please. Yeah, there's the moon. Tell me about the, um, there's a question this person kind of tries to figure out. Why is it that their heart is just so loyal to you? It's just, why is the eight of swords here? Yeah, look at that. Same exact spot. The queen of wands in reverse. Isn't that wild? These insecurities that they feel about this connection bring up a lot of anxiety for this person in their heart. And they're insecure, I think, about the way that you feel and, and the way that they feel brings up, their, the way that they feel, this is weird, but the way that they feel about you in their heart, the way that they love you here, brings up anxiety for this person. I think that they're afraid of, I think they could be just afraid of getting hurt, you know? Um, they feel, they look at you as if you're someone that's kind of grounded in their heart, but also there's a very mysterious kind of energy to you and a fear of being de deceived is something else that they feel as well. Why is strength here? They question how they feel a lot. Why is strength here? Because it's, it's a feeling that won't kind of go, you know, it, it only grows or comes back back together. It's a strength here. You have the nine of cups in reverse with the three of pentacles in reverse. This person doesn't know how. Yeah. This person's trying to be stronger than their. What they really emotionally want here in this connection. They're trying to overtake that. Trying to be stronger than that. And I think this person's worried about, I mean, this person worries about a lot of stuff when it comes to their heart. Why is the seven of wands here? Let's just keep going. Why is the seven of wands in reverse? Why is the seven of wands in reverse? Judgment. Yep. In their heart, this person wants to let their guard down. They want to be able to be vulnerable and express themselves here. 
Um, but not, not a sword is in reverse. Yeah, in the world in reverse. They're afraid of ending here um, in the chariot in reverse. They're afraid to take any kind of action here towards you in their heart because they're afraid of things ending. Um, it's almost like with this hermit in reverse, they're like, I've learned my lesson. You know, I've already been down that road. I've already went through that journey and had maybe the world in reverse is like a lack of closure. So there could have been a lack of closure in this connection before, or it could be that maybe things are just now kind of rekindled or kind of gotten back together. There's a hope for that. And so they finally reached the end of that tunnel when it comes to their heart and going through some sort of pain here and they don't want to, they don't want to risk it. But in their heart, this person would want to, wants to be vulnerable. They want to be able to express themselves and open themselves up. But this, This person has a level of patience in their heart as well. It's like they're trying to be patient and wait for their kind of wish to unfold gradually. I keep hearing this, this phrase to be easy. Um, take it easy. <laughs> that song just came to my mind. Take it easy. Um, it's almost like this person it's just trying to, man, I just heard be somebody they're not either. It's, they want to be vulnerable and they have the strength to do that. This person does, they can be vulnerable, but they're scared right now to be vulnerable here with you completely because, which causes a lot of, of this energy here. Both of these cards are cards of anxieties. And then you have this king and this queen that's here. So yes, you are someone that they see as this Capricorn energy, you know, someone that's grounded in their lives or someone that they feel like is there. You're there, you know? You're not going anywhere, <laughs> okay? They see you as being there um, in their heart. But the moon gets in the way of that. This person also wonders if, you, if you're worried, I think, about your... Um, status in some kind of way. Yeah, with that moon energy being there, there's a level of loyalty that goes into how this person feels for you. They, all, they always come back to that. It's almost like no matter what you seem like you are to others or kind of the the persona that you put on to others, it's like this person feels like they can always see past that and kind of see this, the truth of who you are. Yeah, that's, that's in their heart. So that's something that this person kind of, the way they connect through love with you um, is how they, they see you in a raw way, you know? But there are some insecurities this person kind of starts to develop here with this Eight of Swords in their heart space. Their kind of, their mind kind of runs away with itself about, I think how you feel about them, how you kind of see them, how things are reflected back onto them in this connection. Um, that is in their heart because I do feel like that's something that could, can hurt this person. It makes them not feel so great when they go down that road of you seeing them in a different way. But this, this person's trying to stay out of their thoughts. And I think right now they're just focused on, on their head and, and, I mean, this person's kind of all over the place, to be honest with you. I don't think that they know what they're doing, to be honest. I think they know what they're not doing. <laughs> why is the judgment here? Which is, why is judgment here? The five of swords. Yeah, this person's really conflicted about what the truth is here. Um, on their heart. I mean...
Tell me more about this Five of Swords. I think this person, why is this Five of Swords here? Yeah, the High Priestess. This is something this person, again, they, they keep this to themselves. They're thinking about this new beginning. Now you have the Hangman. They may be trying to, in the, there's that Queen of Swords with the Wheel of Fortune. They're trying to sit in a position to where they're thinking about the, an opportunity here and just being an opportunity here and being logical about things, seeing things maybe a different perspective, but they're trying to stay away from their fears as well. So they're kind of maintaining this, um, even though this conflict is here, they're keeping all that under the surface, okay? This is, this is someone that has a lot of fear and conflict that's going on, and they want to be vulnerable and open up and, and release their guard here with you but it's scary to this person. They're very conflicted about doing that because I think this person's just afraid to get hurt again. Okay. So let's get some, um, we had Virgo, Libra, Pisces, Capricorn, and I think that's all out of that spread. Okay, so let's see what their actions are gonna be, okay? Um, Wow, the Ten of Wands is there with the King of Cups. This person has a lot of love for you, okay? And it's, they see, <laughs> this is gonna sound bad, but I don't mean it that way. This person sees the love that they have for you as a burden because they don't feel like that they can be fully successful here. And they just don't have recognition of how you feel either. So, yeah. They don't know. So right now, I feel like this person kind of feels like this is kind of in a way a burden. Okay, my goodness. I told you all these cards are slippery. Yeah, I saw the Seven of Pentacles. Apparently wanted to show itself to me, which is about investing. And I don't know if this person knows if, they don't know if this is a good investment or not a good investment. And they're trying to just, I mean, if, I think this person would love to just completely open up to you. That's what the flower does. Okay, so what are their actions? What are Paul II's person's actions here? The Empress. They want to nurture this connection. What are their actions here, Paul II's person's actions? I don't know why that, I could have to take such a deep breath there. Even though this is hard and it's a struggle here with this nine of wands and there's that six of wands in reverse because they don't know if they can be successful here. Um, and they, they still this lack of recognition and it's like, let me get one more. The six of swords in reverse. Tell me about the Empress energy, please. The 10 of swords, yeah. Tell me about the, um, the Six of Wands in reverse. Why is the Six of Wands in reverse? We'll call two's person their actions. Why is the Six of Wands here in reverse? Okay. And then Nine of Swords again in reverse. And there's that Seven of Pentacles again. Isn't that crazy? Um, well, let's go Nine of Wands here. King of Wands in reverse. Well, hello. That's the first time we've seen him. We've seen the Queen a lot. Why is the Six of Swords in the reverse. There's that strength. This person's in that page of cups. They're offering a little bit, but they're trying to hold themselves together. There's that king of pentacles again in the page of pentacles in reverse. Will of fortune. They're procrastinating a little bit because um, they're trying to hold things together here. When it comes to their emotions and how they kind of express themselves, they're doing things in a very slow way. There may be some kind of, this person's someone that will interact or kind of flirt. You know, if you're not interacting physically, then they could, this could just be like sending, you know, a message back and forth or whatever. They're maintaining some sort of emotional type of tie here in this connection. Um, that's what their actions are, okay? They're, they want to nurture this connection because they don't want this to end here with this Ten of Swords. They want to nurture a new beginning here with you or a positive, something new kind of surfacing here, something that they 
they think about and that they want to nurture. But they don't know if they can be successful in this. And they're trying to, I heard be agreeable. This person is struggling with being authentic to who they are, but also not pushing you away at the same time. And this Nine of Swords is saying, I could start this fire, I have the matches, but I just got out of, I just got out of, you know, not knowing if this is something that was gonna come back together or not, or not knowing if this investment and this connection was something that was gonna pay off or not. Do I really want to do that? I don't know if I'll be successful there. So they don't. So they bottle them up. They, this is someone that's bottling up their emotions here for you. Because they don't know if they release this. And it's very hard for this person to do that. And you may have already turned this person down. They may have already tried to some extent. And you may have turned this person down. Because you have this one match outside of the jar that's broke. And then you have this King of Wands here that's holding the big match that's here. I'm getting Leo energy from this card because of the tiger. I mean, the line that's on his arm. But it could also represent um, um, Aries or, or Sagittarius. Sorry, guys. I got so distracted right here by this card. But... They're, with this King of Wands in reverse, they don't know, they're trying to look out for themselves here because they don't know how you're going to react to this. How you would react to them kind of opening themselves up at all or being, being vulnerable in some kind of way. So they, they bottle their emotions up. So the Six of Swords in reverse is, is going back to a situation and they're trying to remain patient here. Either, either this is someone that is, is going back to a situation and they're trying to remain patient with how things kind of unfold or this is someone that's waiting for this to take place or waiting for you to come back around. But they're in an energy of waiting and patience and keeping to themselves, nurturing things but not being completely vulnerable, even though in their heart that that's what they would want to do. Okay, so let's get some message cards. So these message cards have a lot of other cards in them as well. So we'll just see what comes out. What would Pile Two's person say to them if they could say anything? We have warning, don't dismiss the red flags. Yeah, this is, this person's looking. They're looking for that. They're looking for delusion. They, they want, they don't want to fall into a trap. And that's why they're being kind of closed off here. Um, I'm so attracted to you. Yep, that's there. I see you guys as king of wands come up, so. Or queen of wands. That's here as well. We are not right for each other. See, this is what they're fighting with that we saw in their heart and in their um, thoughts. This is what they're trying to fight with. We saw that world in the beginning, if you remember that. It was my fault, but I blamed you. This is right on top of that Six of Swords. So maybe they felt like a separation that took place here was they left or got away from this in some kind of way over something that maybe you have done, but then they kind of look at it as maybe they did something as well. Something that's there. They didn't see that before. We have, it's time for me to heal now. Yeah, they know they're still healing, but they just, they're trying to nurture themselves and this connection at the same time. That's what they're doing. I understand you better now. Yeah, we saw that before, and I pretend that you don't care, <laughs> that I don't care. Yeah, that's what they're doing. They're trying to pretend like they're trying to play this they're just trying to play it cool, that's all. They're just trying to play it cool. My goodness, I just keep messing that up. <laughs> Can I have one more, please, for Paul Two's person? I don't really know you. Yeah, that's a shadow card. They're worried about that. You know, sometimes that's, that's an ego um, 
like when they get kind of trapped in their own illusion in their head and, and one of the things that they think about is did I just imagine all this and am I just imagining this and what if I really don't know this person you know um it's kind of when your fears start to kind of run away with you there so let's get some overall messages for us and then we'll get some charms these are the um the magic of the unicorn and we'll take that one <laughs> Um, the Cosmic Pearl, number 34. Expand your psychic gifts. Open the gate to the angelic realms. I don't know why that wouldn't come out, but I'm going to get one of these as well, the Energy and Spirit Oracles. It's like this person sees this like opportunity here with you as being something that's kind of it's, it's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like getting something that you wanted for a long time, but not trying to show how giddy you are kind of, I don't know why that word came to mind, but it did, um, about getting it, you know, how excited you are about getting that thing, trying to control yourself in a way, something that's here and this person's trying to stay kind of focused or balanced and letting things unfold kind of naturally here and kind of staying in tune with their inner guidance, um, reflecting on things of the past and not making any kind of abrupt decision or expression. Okay. What is advice for Paul 2, please? Advice for, for Paul 2, please. Your internal spirit. This came out in... Did this come out in pile one? It was the bottom of the deck in pile one. Higher self and sacred in intuition. This is what this person's doing. And you have mirrored numbers here, guys. Pile one had both 44 that came out. And y'all have mirrored numbers. How crazy. And look at them. Look how closely these cards kind of sim are similar to one another. How wild. So 34 and 43 here. So these may be the worlds apart that I felt before. Um, differences that are here were not right for each other. Um, this person's really trying to stay connected to their own inner guidance and balance here. Um, yep, very much so. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's get some initials to close here. I kind of want to get a... I don't know why for you guys. I'm kind of wanting to get a... Another card. I'm not sure what it is, though. Oh, okay. For those of you that are interacting with this person now, I want to get one of these to see. I feel like somebody's kind of wanting to know what's coming or what's going to happen next. Possibilities for that. Let's give me whatever that is that I need to see here for Paul 2. Moving forward, Paul 2. That came right out. Um, we have full moon in Scorpio. <laughs> Breathe through the tension. There's definitely tension here for sure. Um, and then we have the last quarter moon in Aquarius. Reflect on your priorities. So there's something to do with priorities. Could be something that's kind of getting in the way of how this person's kind of perceiving how you maybe feel. There may be some kind of tension build up behind that. That. You know, this nine of ones, we saw this. We're not right for each other. The nine of ones and that having that one match on the outside there. Um, if you turn this person down, it definitely something that really hurts their ego and creates some kind of tension is being built up or created there. And it could have something to do with the priority that they feel like they are in this connection. Um, and that might be a reason this person's mind kind of wonders or they kind of put on that expression of it. it you don't mean that much, you know, because they don't want to get hurt. If they kind of see those red flags or feel like that's a red flag of some sort, if they're not being looked at as some kind of priority or they just don't feel that way towards you, they're not going to, yeah, express. Romance here, one step at a time. Yep, that's what we've been talking about. Play. Yep. Rest, relax, and relief, and be firmer. Wow. 
So I think that this is kind of a message for you to take this kind of one step at a time, which I think that you're already kind of in that energy that we picked up on in the beginning, but kind of allowing yourself to kind of relax and kind of just be playful here is important. But this be firmer that's here may have something to do with being firmer with yourself and possibly how to kind of express yourself. Let me get one more for that. Just be firmer here for fulfillment. So be firmer with what it is that you want to fulfill here. Um, if you're wanting, if you're wanting to f have some sort of fulfillment with this person, then I think that you need to be able to, because of what we just talked about with these two cards, be expressive towards that in some sort of way. Be firmer with yourself when it comes to what it is you want. Um, speak up in some kind of way, you know. Okay. So we do have two in the bowl which is the number of partnerships and connections and balance. We also have the zero or the O, which is um, the full in tarot. So taking that leap and, and the number 20. So maybe 2020 is significant here. It's just 20. Um, we also have Q, N, R, A, V, O, E, we have D, U, K, H, O, B, L. So there's love right there. Um, uh, Y, and R. So we have Holy in the bowl. <laughs> My name's Holly, so there's Holy. Maybe this is, there's some kind of a religious thing that's kind of a hindrance here. Um, on this connection. What else? We have like. We also have something that I don't want to spell, <laughs> but I can just say it's here and this person does think about you in a very intimate way. Let's just say that. Um, I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> um, it just came up. <laughs> so what else do we have here? Outside of that, <laughs> now I just can't unsee. We have live. You know, maybe this person is something to do with living or where you wanna live, lived. Maybe this is someone that lived with you. Um, sorry, I was sidetracked over here. I saw a victory, but we don't have it. I just, I see victory. Um, this person wanting to have a victory here with you, but live is like wanting to live with you or maybe wanting to see in those selves live with you or wanting to kind of just live, you know, just be able to do what it is that they want to do here. Um, we have look, so maybe there's something that you need to look at. We have hey, so this person could be sending you a message. <laughs> um, okay, guys, so I'm going to hold this up so y'all can see them. I'm sure there's more stuff in here, but um, yep. We have drive as well, so maybe you have to drive or plane, you know, travel towards this person in some kind of way. Um, we have whole. <laughs> I just heard the Dixie Chick song. I need a boy like you, like a hole in my head. Um, maybe relevant here. I don't know. So I'm going to hold this up. <laughs> so y'all can see. And I think I'm going to leave here. Thanks, guys, for being here. I hope this helps. Thanks for your love, your support. If you want a personal reading from me, information for that's in the description box. I'm open to it right now. And um, yeah, that's all I have. Thanks for all your kindness and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye. Hey, Paul three. So if you chose the Muse Tarot and this tiny rock that I have found here um, that looks like a, looks like a broken heart to me. So interesting, this rock. Um, I actually was going through kind of a healing, healing past a situation. And um, I went for a walk to still listen to some music, kind of get out and ground myself a little bit. And I look down and I see this. Um, 
and it looked like a broken heart. And the emphasis of that is that I was kind of, you know, kind of asking spirit why something was kind of transpiring the way that it was. Um, and it's almost like, for me, it was like spirit saying, you know, we're here with you and we understand your heart's breaking kind of thing. Um, so that may be, that story may be significant for you guys. You may have felt that similar way or may have felt that way with this other person in this connection um, that you've been kind of experiencing kind of why this is kind of happening or why you and this person are kind of, you're going through this with this person. Um, so before we get tarot, <laughs> I don't know why, just shuffle that, just keep on talking there. We're going to grab some um, of these. This is the Fortune Oracles. And this is going to give us an overall energy of your energy and your person's energy. So you know for sure if this is definitely your reading or not. Um, okay, so what is Paul 3's energy towards this person and this connection? Wow. So that actually came out in Paul 2. Um, but you have the number 11 here, flowers. So 11 is justice in tarot. So you may be just kind of wanting justice here. I'm actually getting a completely different energy from your card than I did from Paul 2. Um, so what is Paul 3's overall energy? What is their person's overall energy towards Paul 3 in this connection? Okay. Wow. We have the lion, number 16. Very different kind of energy here. <laughs> Very different kind of energy here. Um... They have luck on the bottom of the deck. You're right to be strong and optimistic about the opportunities ahead. Interesting. Okay. So let's go into your energy first because there is some conflict over here with your person. Um, this is the number 16, which is the tower in tarot. So there's something to do with this person feeling like there may be a loss or conflict or change they're kind of experiencing they feel we'll, we'll get into their energy in a minute let's just focus on you first okay so be generous success and emotional fulfillment are yours so pile three i feel like you're in a place to where you feel justified okay i feel like it's this energy of you feeling like you're in a peaceful place you've grown a lot you're healing you're going in your own direction here and you feel like that currently I think that you're okay in the state of being that you're in and you may have been someone that has gone through a long heavy cycle of healing from this connection and now you've kind of reached a point to where you feel like at ease you feel in balance um, you feel wherever you are is a good place your person on the other hand not so great they're having a tower here they could be having a sudden sudden realization of maybe their own. When, I don't normally get this, but it's coming out. There's some sort of, I mean, obviously I see strength with the line here. This line is not happy. And so there's, there's some sort of um, energy here of this person feeling as if, Conflict. There's conflict here that they feel. It says harness the loyal, protective aura of the lion and charge ahead magnificently. So with that being said, I think this person is trying to kind of have, ha has had some kind of abrupt change or maybe because of this connection, it's caused this abrupt change in their life in some kind of way. And they're maintaining this there it's a very protective energy that I'm feeling but it's also in a way I think this person has had some kind of epiphany about this connection and how maybe their more protective energy or more trying to be loyal has been distorted and caused some sort of tower moment in this connection okay so what I mean by that is sometimes when strength is in reverse, there's a lack of patience when it comes to someone that's trying to protect 
themselves or protect a situation. And that can come across as a destructive energy where this person may have felt like they were doing something in order to protect a situation, but all they did was kind of cause destruction. So I don't know how that goes in with this, ties in with your connection here, but this person's having some sort of tower moment take place, okay? Um, and I don't think this is in their life. I think this is completely mental. Um, this tower moment that they're having is completely a, a mental tower moment here. I do want to get one more card for the connecting energies. I took the bottom in the deck in the other card, in the other piles, but I, I want to get one. I just want to see what comes out here for connecting energies for pile three, please. Connecting energies for pile three. What's the connecting energy? Two cards. Celebrations and the moon. Boy, that moon's been coming out a lot. Interesting. This moon, guys, is the number 21, which is the world and tarot. So this has to do with an ending and the illusions around the ending. Pay attention to your intuition at this time and move ahead confidently. Yep. I think that you are in this place. This person is just now kind of being shaken up to maybe how their actions have affected this relationship here with you. We have celebrations. You are ready to bring new and sub new and exciting ideas. <sighs> You are, you, guys, I'm sorry. I am so dyslexic sometimes, and I hate it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you are ready to bring new and exciting things into your life. And I really am, by the way. That's not a joke. Um, I just laugh at myself now about it. It's funny because both of these are in the number five, right? And five is that number of loss and change. This person may have seen this as a gift and they're realizing how they maybe affected that gift that they had with you. But this could, something could also come to light around Christmas time because that's definitely something I'm seeing here. Or something could change around Christmas time or they're hoping something could change around Christmas time. Or they may see that as an opportunity to kind of bring something to light. Um, but I think this person is feeling like this gift that they had or whatever they've lost. This person's not in a good place, honestly. Um, they're in a place of, but it's a needed place. I needed to say that. Okay. It's not a good place, but it's a certainly a needed place that they need to be in at this moment because they need to be able to see how their actions have reflected um, their wants and their needs and their stability of what they had. It's all coming out, you know. You have one, one, one here, which means that you you are on the right path, and you're listening to your inner guidance, and you're trusting in that inner guidance, um, and you're not allowing the moon to kind of overshadow that. Whereas this person, I feel like, kind of is. I think that you're in well and balanced. I do, pile three. I think that you're in a well balanced place. And some of y'all may pick up, pick up on opposite energies here, by the way. Okay, so let's get some tarot. So how we do this is, me and my team, <laughs> we, um, thoughts, feelings, and actions. We're going to do this in a way of, since we're just focused on your person here, what is your person's thoughts, what's in their head, and then we'll do two more spreads, okay? So it's going to be a pretty long reading, but. I really feel the need to get this one out. Okay. What is Pal 3's person's thoughts? What are they thinking about Pal 3 in this connection? What is what is in their thoughts? We have the Emperor. What is in their thoughts? Aries energy. What is in their thoughts about Pal 1 in this connection? There's that Ten of Swords in reverse. What's their thoughts? There's that ending they're thinking about. What's their thoughts? You have the Four of Cups in reverse. There's that sudden awareness, that epiphany there. What is in their thoughts? The Nine of Swords. Guys, this person feels like if you've kind of walked away from this person, they're figuring this out. They're like, they're having this kind of sudden awareness of, 
why you walked away from them. It's kind of like it's all making sense to this person at this time. They're putting all these pieces together um, and it's causing them this stress and anxiety because I think this person is kind of wondering if they can improve at whatever's transpired here. Tell me about the emperor, please. Yeah, look at that, the lovers. Okay, so tell me about the Ten of Swords. Why is the Ten of Swords here? <laughs> kind of landed on my hand for a minute. The Six of Cups. This person's very nostalgic about this connection. And this could also have to do with maybe possibly if, if you have children with this person, having kind of a um, improvements here when it comes to that. I don't know why I'm bringing that up. But there's a adult here and then a child here, which is normally not the case in this. There's two sixes here as well. This person's trying to figure out how to heal something, how to heal this relationship or how to heal. There's two fours as well, how to stabilize this relationship. Um, Four of cups here in reverse. Look at that, the star. So, you have all your numbers out here. Besides, if you go backwards, you don't have one, and two, and three. They don't know how this is gonna come together, but they know that they wanna heal this connection and find some kind of stability here. Um, this person does have some sort of hope about the future and things kind of, somehow or another, kind of like coming back together. Why is this amount of swords here? They have the ten of um, wands. So ten, nine, eight, seven, six. You have your fives, your fours. Three, two, one is what's missing. And this is your person's thoughts. So they haven't quite got to that point to where they can go back to a new beginning yet. They're still kind of weeding their way through all that to find balance um, and how they feel about things. They have a lot of sleepless nights. They, they think a lot about things in the future and how all that stuff is gonna affect. A few, there's, y'all may have some kids together or something. There's an outside influence that's here that's needs, that's a, a stable, something stable. This could even be in the way of having the same friendship group or are, are working together or something where you just kind of, you, there's an interaction that's here, I feel, for some of you. Um, and that's a burden and they, they worry about that. But for others of you, this person's trying to kind of figure out what happened in this connection and where this new like epiphany that they're realizing here is that maybe what their wish fulfillment was in this connection wasn't necessarily what your wish fulfillment was and that maybe those were a little bit different and that's something this person didn't pick up on when you when you were together. So your needs weren't being met in this connection the way that they felt like they, they were meeting them because it wasn't the same. This is kind of this epiphany I feel like your person's kind of coming into here. They may have placed some unrealistic expectations on you in this connection is something else that's coming up. And realizing that maybe you got out of this situation because you were trying to choose your, your own happiness here and you were being unfulfilled. Hmm. They're thinking about how they could have done things better at the end. They're thinking about the ending and how they could have done things a lot better. Um, they're taking some kind of, some sort of responsibility over this relationship. I don't know why I'm sitting here shuffling. But I landed on the nine of um, wands here with the death and that three of swords in reverse. Yeah, this person's healing. You know, they, they're trying to get over the grief that they feel. And they are taking responsibility here with that Aries energy. We have... Um, Gemini here as well, also um, Aquarius energy and Scorpio. They're transforming and they do feel, you know, it's, it's helping kind of lift the weight of the connection. For some reason, I think this person maybe put a lot of blame on you as far as the ending of this connection goes. 
um, and something to do with loyalty here could be part of that in some kind of way, shape, or form. Maybe they saw this as maybe you never kind of getting away from this connection, no matter what they did, that you would always have to stay loyal to them. And that was that unrealistic expectation. Um, but definitely they feel this kind of, this new epiphany that they've come into about you being the one that's kind of decided to kind of move towards something where you feel fulfilled and happy. And he'll pass that. He'll pass this. It's something this person is, it's helping them to release a burden that they have felt in this connection. Or maybe they felt that they were just kind of getting, you know, it's kind of like that depressive kind of, I mean, I don't want to say that. It's kind of like a, they feel really bad about themselves or, or not about themselves, feeling really, really bad for themselves is what I want to say. They have felt really bad for themselves and how this thing has kind of ended. And for some reason, whatever this epiphany come up and they can reflect on maybe the parts that they want to take responsibility for and how they could have made improvements there has helped them to release so much of that burden of feeling like feeling sorry for themselves. It's, it's helping them to kind of recognize um, and find balance within. It's helping them to heal past this. Okay, so let's see what their emotions are. Let's see what's in their heart space, okay? Okay. So what is in this person, all three's person? What is in their heart here for Pal 3 in this connection? What is in their heart? They're trying to see past their anger. It's something that keeps coming up. It's undeniable. I just um, They're trying to see past their anger here. Look at that. Queen of Swords. Yeah. With the Four of Voices. The Four of Swords. They're trying to think more logically, I think, that about what happened. And that's helping them to be able to and get out of their heart so much. Because I think this person feels kind of hurt about maybe you just said enough is enough and you kind of walked away, you know. Um, and they were like, what? You're supposed to be here forever. <laughs> and I can do anything I want. Like, what in the world? <laughs> no. Okay. So. How three. What is Paul 3's person's feelings? What are their feelings? What do they feel in their heart for Paul 3? What do they feel in their heart for Paul 3? Okay, so the Seven of Swords is here with that Ten of Wands again. What do they feel in their heart for Paul 3 spirit, Paul 3's person? So you have the Page of Cups. And the Five of Cups, guys. This person is missing you. Um, you also have Five, Five, Five here, but we already saw the tower. Um, I mean, this is the tower number 16, so that's no surprise there. There's definitely some changes that are taking place, and this person's missing you. They feel this loss. They, they're, this loss is weighing on them. It's something that's really weighing on them. And almost kind of this deceptive kind of energy. I don't always see that with the Seven of Swords because it technically is someone that's just trying to be strategic in a situation. You know, he goes in there and steals the swords while every the army is asleep. So when they wake up, they can't fight them. So getting out of a bad situation, you know, is something that's there being strategic about it. Even though it causes you to be a little bit sneaky, you're doing it to kind of protect yourself in some kind of way. That's energy that's here. This person's still in a very protective kind of energy of themselves, which is something that we got from this card here with protect aura of the line and charge ahead. You know, they're still trying to push forward, but there is a little bit of a carrying a burden about, and I feel like an emotional kind of apology that this person kind of, I don't always get that with the Page of Cups, but I am here with the Ten of Wands and the Five of Cups on either side, either, either side of them. They feel kind of apologetic about kind of how they kind of handled things, I think, but they, they're conflicted about that, and they wish that there's a There's a thought in their heart about maybe things weren't exactly what they thought that they were or how they played out wasn't exactly what they thought because they allowed their kind of more 
masculine kind of energy in a distorted way kind of take over over that feeling and that protective state, that loyal to, loyal to, loyalty kind of energy that I was feeling on before. Defensiveness kind of kicked in, you know, and they weren't allowing themselves to see what was going on, I think, with you. There's definitely regrets here. This person I feel like is the burden they feel is kind of how they, I think, how they treated you there towards maybe the end of this connection. Why is the Seven of Swords here? And this is in their heart, so yeah, look at that. If there was any kind of, any kind of secrets here, any kind of deceptive kind of energy here at all, or if they were just being strategic, trying to be too strategic, they regret that. Um, and they're disappointed with themselves when it comes to that. But I think they're just disappointed with kind of not seeing things that they should have seen, to be honest with you. Why is the, um, the Ten of Wands here? Why is this Ten of Wands here? What is the Ten of Wands here for? Ten of Wands. The Knight of Pentacles. Yeah. See, they're moving forward, moving forward past this, you know, how they f have felt, you know, in their heart, slowly and surely they're kind of moving forward, but they're still carrying this burden. Um, and they may just kind of feel like it's something else. It's just, there's something else that I have to carry with me in my life, you know, kind of energy that I'm feeling. Um, why is the page of cups here? And the knot of swords. They think about this a lot, coming to you and kind of apologizing about how they've kind of acted here. It lays on their heart because they feel like they could fix things, I think. Um, tell me about the Five of Cups. Why is the Five of Cups here? I think this person misses your communication as well. You have the star in reverse. Yeah, they're disappointed in how things turned out. They feel bad in how things kind of transpired because they kind of feel in their heart that they don't have another chance here with you. There is no future anymore, and that door is kind of shut completely because of the way that they kind of acted about things. This person's definitely seeing themselves in a different kind of way. Look at that hermit with the Empress energy. And there's that Five of Pentacles in reverse. Yeah, they're coming out of out of the way they were feeling, where they, they said that they were feeling that sadness about themselves. They're coming out of that. And they're seeing you in kind of a different way. And they're holding that truth with that hermit and kind of reflecting on that truth now and seeing how they felt, how they feel about it now. This is someone, even though we haven't had the hangman here, it's... I'm feeling like this energy of someone that's totally seeing a different perspective finally of a situation where maybe a lot of time has gone by because there's a buildup of tension that's here. And now that they're seeing it, now, now they're revisiting it in a different kind of way and they're having like these epiphanies about things where they wish they could have went back and changed. But lack of communication is something that's laying on this person's heart um, and a regretfulness that's laying on their heart, um, things not turning out the way that they wanted them to, and and now being at a place where they feel like they're, they're kind of losing hope that they'll ever be like an a energy of making amends here, even though something that lies on this person's heart is wanting to apologize, I feel like, for maybe the role that they played in this. Sometimes they think about it, I think. I think sometimes they think about just quick kind of communication coming in and just surprising way and kind of just communicating how they feel, you know, an apology in some sense. But because they do feel like this burden will be there for always. It's just something that slowly they will, they, they can get out of their system, but it's just always going to kind of be there still, you know? Okay. So let's see what their actions are. Hall three. Let's call this person's actions. 
I don't know if you've watched the stars at night with this person or maybe the moon or something, but that's something that keeps kind of coming up with this card. Um, maybe towards the end of this relationship or connection. Or it's something they think about. Okay, so let's see what their actions are for Paul 3. What is Paul 3's person's actions towards Paul 3 in this connection? Okay, so we have, there's the tower. There's the Ace of Wands in reverse. The Page of Swords in reverse. The Ten of, of Swords in the reverse. Why is the tower here? You have the High Priestess in reverse. Also, the Two of Pentacles want to come out. Why is the, high, the Ace of... There's your ones that we were looking for. <laughs> and your two. And, and your three. Right? No, no, no. Two, two. Ace. Yep. We had three of the Empress there. So why is the Ace of Wands in reverse? Ace of Wands. Why is it in reverse? The Six of, of Pentacles. So why is the Page of Swords in the reverse? There's that Seven of Swords again, but it's trying to go in reverse, which is kind of similar to this High Priestess in reverse, but we'll get to that. Why is the Ten of Swords here in reverse? Yep, King of Cups. There's that burden again with that Ace of Pentacles, that new beginning. And, and the page of inspirations in reverse. Page of ones in reverse. Yeah, I have to say, guys, this person ha doesn't have any kind of faith that this connection will ever come back together, if this is something that you're wondering. But there is a sense that this person wishes there at least be some kind of, com of improvements here um, and, and balance when it comes to the emotions that are in this connection. So I don't know where you're at with this person, but they are kind of hopeful for that or wanting that at least. Um, but they don't, I don't think that they necessarily know kind of how you feel about things. This person is keeping to themselves here in a way. This epiphany, this tower moment could have something to do with some kind of secrets or some kind of awareness that they didn't have before coming to the surface and them trying to juggle what it is they know now, but this could also be this epiphany that they're having here as well, right? Um, coming out into the open of something that maybe you've tried to tell them in the past, but they didn't quite get it, didn't quite understand or see it because they couldn't see past their own kind of perspective. Now they're like having this epiphany and now they're trying to balance out how they feel about it now. Um, So the Ace of Wands in reverse with the Six of uh, Pentacles that's here. This Ace of Wands in reverse is a card of saying this person feels like as far as giving this thing a new opportunity, they don't feel like that's something that's grasped, that they can actually grasp at this moment in time. Um, there's a lack of kind of drive to want to do that because of this feeling that this person feels that they're kind of still kind of seeping in and seeing how they kind of feel about this new epiphany that they're having, it's causing them to not have this like driven energy to want to move towards you in any kind of way. Because there's a whole nother level I feel like this person's going to go through of, of feeling kind of guilty with that five of cups that we saw, you know. They're going in their heart space. They're going through this kind of guiltiness or remorsefulness or whatever that is of this new perspective they've gained, this awakening that they've had, and how that's affecting them. So there's not really a driven energy to want to kind of give to this connection at this moment in time. Um, but this page of, of swords being in reverse with the seven of swords in reverse, I think that this person's definitely coming out of something that they feel like they had a lack of information on. Um, like this, but it kind of ties in with this new understanding, but this could also be somebody from the outside and how maybe they they were misinformed in some kind of way and that kind of coming out into the open, out into the light. 
that whatever truth they thought they they had was not exactly how things kind of transpired was something for some some of you that is this person's kind of putting on these glasses now you see they're kind of seeing things in a whole different way and the seven of swords in reverse could be that you know things coming out into the open are turning over a new leaf and um yeah, so if there was, you know, it can even come down to the Seven of Swords or the Page of Swords being that gossip kind of energy. And in reverse, it's like whatever that was was not right. It's like that that messenger of communication that comes to you and says something, but they get it all screwed up. And it's like not exactly what happened. That's kind of being exposed here, I feel like, in some way. And that's not going to resonate for everybody, but it's definitely an energy that's here. Wanting improvements here in the future is something that's here with this person because they still have this King of, of Cups. They want to be able to improve how they feel emotionally about all of this. And this is them kind of, they're going to be kind of going on this journey here to where they kind of are trying to figure out how to kind of put everything now that they feel together and balance it. So I don't really see any kind of foreign movement here. These are all these are all kind of blocked energies besides the tower. So there's still the, the action that they are having is this action of epiphany, you know, this action of awareness. Um, they're becoming wise to something that they didn't see before. And they're letting all that kind of seep in. And then they're going to kind of see where they are. So let's get some, what would this person say? This is kind of a mix of cards. So I don't know what's going to all come out in here. So what would pop? Well, that just came flying right out. <laughs> you were the best thing in my life. That's that we saw before with that star energy that was there. Well, these are flying right out. Um, chemistry is here. So this person with that new idea, look at that chemistry. And that's number 28, which is 10. So there's an ending of a cycle here as far as how this person sees this connection here. Um, okay, so let's see what else comes out. But feeling that chemistry with you is something that's still there, you know? What else would this person say to Paul for me? Um, I am becoming a better person, yeah. I think that they are. I think that they're having this epiphany towards what happened here, and it's helping them to become a, a better person. You speak to me through music. So they may get a lot of synchronicity. So when it comes to songs with you, um, <laughs> I miss hearing your voice. Did I not say that earlier? This person misses communication with you. They miss communicating here with you in abundance. Yeah. This person may be kind of trying to focus on what it is they do have to try to center themselves, you know. Um, but they could just also miss this abundance that they felt with you when it comes to chemistry, you know, and, and feeling like you were the best one in their life or best thing in their life. Do I still have a chance and I want to make amends is here? Yep. And that's this Ten of Swords in reverse. That's where there's been some kind of ending and you want to make improvements, right? You're getting close to the ending of something and you want to make improvements there. Um, this, is, this is a thought this person has a lot about. If this thing will ever come back together and if, and if you would even kind of, if you still have love for them, if you still carry love for them, you know, it's something that's here as well. Um, I also have this here, which I think that it's showing itself to me because it's a significant part of this whole reading. If you take anything out of this reading, take the fact that your person here is in a place to where they're kind of looking at things completely differently, and it's something that's definitely needed here. I never used to look, in you, look at you in that way because their ego, I think, kind of got the best of them in the past, so they couldn't see your perspective of something. <clears throat> okay. So let's get some advice. These are the magic of the unicorns. Let's get some advice for Pell 3, please. Be a beacon, number 36. Be an inspiration, light the way for others. So this is your energy here, and the same energy I picked up on here, guys. You being in this 111 energy, listening to your own inner guidance there and kind of moving forward towards um, balance and, and finding your way. Um, you're definitely kind of reached a point past um, understanding yourself here and you're in healing past this connection and finding peace in that. 
is something that's really here. But if you're still kind of interested towards this person, that be a beacon as you kind of continuing on that path. Even if it's not has anything to do with this person, you being in that energy of finding that peace and balance and kind of just staying focused on yourself is going to help this connection. Um, okay, so it lasts for pile three. Two cards came out. We have talent guides, number 41, spiritual mentor and teachers. You could be a spiritual mentor or teacher. And this is kind of a saying just to continue on that path. Continue to keep following that. Oh, I never can say this right, guys. It's number 15. It's Archangel Hanuel. Hanuel. I think is how you pronounce it. I looked it up once before and I still, you know, I just, I can't ever say anything wrong. But she's holding a bird. Uh, a bird's nest and it has eggs in it and one of them's hatched so you have new beginnings coming and I feel like you're getting past like feeling trapped with the number 15 being the devil um you have joy blessings and intuition on here again so I think your intuition's guiding you in the right in the right direction you have something to look forward to in the future you have blessings I feel like that are being birthed that are coming on their way so if that's a question that you've been wondering then there you go prosperity is here as well which is the number 42 which is also six 15 is also six abundance of success so you definitely have you know if you can can keep continuing being on that <laughs> relaxation is at the bottom of the deck <laughs> um peaceful pursuits and happy times yeah they're telling you to relax here it's just kind of be in this energy of kind of taking a break and relaxing continuing being that beacon that you are listening or being that mentor or teacher that you are and listening to your intuition is going to lead you towards your own abundance here. It's the second time we've had abundance that's here. Um, and not only with yourself, but with this connection, you know, you may feel like well, when is your time coming? Maybe when the, with this person or whatever it is, but you may feel like, you know, when is my time going to be with this person again? Or when do I get to reconnect with this person again? Or maybe, no, they said postcard. Okay, we'll do a postcard from Spirit. Or you may just be wondering, you know, if I've done all this healing and I don't have anybody still or whatever that is. They're just telling you, keep doing what you're doing. I know that's, I know divine timing. We love hearing that. <laughs> we just love hearing that, but it's so true. But they feel like, you know, you're on that yellow brick road if you just kind of keep going and there will be obstacles there, but you'll be able to reach success. You can't always see what's going on. You can't always see like what's being paved or how the road's looking in front. But we just know that if we have faith and trust in spirit for our highest good, that it's going to unfold the way it's meant to. We have a, a big butterfly here with... You are magical. Two cards came out. The other one says with love. I'm going to read the you are magical one first. I felt like it ties into what I'm talking about here. Um, there's a balance between activity and rest, ebb and flow. You can't have one without the other. If you're faced with an obstacle right now, the best course is to surrender in non-resistance. Soon enough, you'll see how easy it is to flow around it. Now is one of those times when you must trust the river of your life. <laughs> yeah, go with the flow. And in no time, you'll reach what you have your heart and your hopes set on. Just remember that spirit will always keep your head above water and will direct the currents. When it's time for a greater effort, you'll know exactly when you'll need to work those manifesting muscles. It can be challenging to master the flow cycles of life, but as you develop your skills, affluence will be yours. Enjoy the flow and trust that those currents, for we're right here with you with our little umbrella drink, smiling at your success. <laughs> more, more about success that's just what I was talking about being in the flow kind of it's just you're, you're where you're meant to be it's just something that they want to make sure that you're aware of and you may be questioning that but you are where you are meant to be keep going they don't want you to slow down you have success around the corner so with you sometimes you just feel like no one understands you you're not heard or even that you don't count this my dear is a terrible illusion and although your feelings tell you that abandonment is real, well, we know that we who love you know better. You are never alone, and even when rejection happens, you're ultimately being protected so better things can replace what you wouldn't have worked out for you in the first place. Everyone on this side of the veil is watching over you and rooting for your ultimate success. <laughs> 
Life loves you. We love you. And we are, you are a unique spark of the, of, the, of the divine and always connected to the light and to source. You are always in our care. Trust and keep the faith. Love you always and forever. There's another reminder there, guys. <laughs> you know, that's another reminder there. Yeah, if you've been feeling alone and that, that's kind of been coming up here and wondering about that, then that's definitely kind of a message that you needed to hear, that you are not alone. And, and you know, rejection is that divine protection always. You may not see it now, but you will. So we have flowing. <laughs> Imagine that. Include. Um... What you resist, persist, <laughs> and success again. Oh my gosh, so crazy, <laughs> so crazy. Um, something about including, <laughs> they're including you in everything that's, that is successful here. So if you don't feel included in kind of your journey in kind of some kind of way, like I said, like you feel like I've done all this healing and now I haven't had my stuff come in, you are, okay? Just keep on going and doing what you're doing. What what you resist persists. So don't resist the fact that you have this healing and this um, all this built up of success that's going on here. Sometimes other people may come across and get things in an easier way than you do, but you may be going through obstacles that are only meant there for you. Those obstacles are purposeful for you. Because maybe there's something in unique about you that you are able to take control of those obstacles, and only you have a vision of how to um, heal past those. That is a wise. Um, what I want to say that I'm going to say um, a wise knowing that only you can have access to in your life experiences, and so they're putting you in this place because. You're at a point to where you deserve at a, a certain thing in your life where it is right now. You're at a different kind of healing stage than you are. Just think about it like that, okay? And even though it's hard and it's a struggle, it's understandable, it's going to persist until you reach the successful point, okay? I don't know what I meant by that. <laughs> Take that however it resonates something that was there. I don't know why I've been drawn to this card, but what does it say? <laughs> Half the failures in life arise from pulling one's horse as he is leaping. So there you go. <laughs> don't pull the reins back until you get over that hurdle. Um, okay. <sighs> okay. So we, <laughs> I wanted to put it as six, but flip back is nine. So nine's here. Hi there. Um, nine is the number of abundance and things coming to flourishing and nearing completion. So they're wanting to say you're getting close. You're nearing some kind of completion here before you reach the success. It's coming, guys. If you <laughs> wonder we have abundance, abundance, success, 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 it's here. It's coming. Blessings are on their way. So we have R, S, L. We also have seven, which is things are going to come into alignment. Divine is here. Divine timing is here. We have V, Q, D. We have O, J, C. We also have A, E, Q, X, 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 three X's. <laughs> we have L, J. Sorry if you can hear my dog moaning. I don't know why she's moaning. W or M. O and U. She's probably tired of listening to me. We have DQ. If you don't know what that is, it's Dairy Queen. <laughs> Always point that out because it sticks out to me. We have, um, what else do we have? Hmm. Not really seeing a whole lot, to be honest with you. Guys, I know there's tons of stuff here, but that's just not, it's just, I'm not, it's just not coming out. I'm just not seeing it. It's just not meant to see it, I guess. Um, hmm, strange. <laughs> we have slow. Didn't I say this was, was this the Paul that Take It Easy came out first? 
I think it is. Maybe you should look up that song, Take It Easy. By the Eagles, I think. It's an old song. Yeah, Take Things Slow um, is something that's here. And they, <laughs> they know that you're waiting, okay? They have this, they, they know when this divine timing thing, this is, it's not very fun, but um, that they're saying that you just can't see it. You just can't see what we're doing for you up here. And it's a lot. There's a lot coming. Just hang in there. Okay, guys, I'm just going to hold this up so y'all can see them. Um, and I'm going to leave here. So I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope this resonates. I hope it helps you guys, make sense to you guys, and all that good stuff. If y'all want a personal reading from me, I'm open for that still. It's in the description box below. And that's all I have. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for all your love and your support and all your kindness. And I appreciate y'all. And I hope to see you soon.